A glamorous event in London's Park Lane saw the worlds of cricket and celebrity mix to honour the 30th anniversary of the Bunbury Cricket Club. Founder and host David English welcomed stars of the current England cricket team, many of whom came through this famous festival. When you're a young cricketer and you're 11 or 12 years old, you always eye and uh, dream about the Bunbury Festival being the sort of pinnacle of your youthful cricket career, I suppose. It's the first time where I, I felt like I could meet players from other teams and mix with other, other players and help me socialise uh, quite well. And I used to be a very shy guy. and. I absolutely love it. To have so many kids go through and play first class cricket and so many go on and play for England really I, I think is exceptional and it, it shows the quality of the festival, it shows the quality of selection and it shows the quality of kids that we do have in England that are playing the game. Bunbury is a charity organisation known for its sponsorship of youth cricket. After a Q&A with current England stars, famous guests helped with an auction to raise the money needed to continue its good work. It's a special night for the charismatic driving force behind the Bunbury Foundation. It's very strange having a room full of friends to celebrate 30 years because there's so many stories you could tell. So it is overwhelming, but at the end of the day, it's all about the young ones playing for England. It's all about playing for England, really. Former Rolling Stone Bill Wyman was on hand to play the night out, wrapping up a glorious evening. Famous names have been associated with the Bunburys from the outset with celebrities helping the foundation to raise over £17 million. The Bunbury Festival is an important date in the cricketing calendar. Over the years, the likes of Andrew Flintoff, Michael Vaughan, Marcus Trescothic, Paul Collingwood and Ian Bell were first noticed during the week. 250 for Joe Root. Magnificent to watch. Exactly 10 years before scoring 250 for England, Joe Root was playing at the festival with a host of current professional cricketers. Matt Machen, Zafar Ansari, Jordan Clark, Nathan Buck, James Burke, Jack Leach and Azim Rafiq, to mention a few. It's the first time you really get to, you know, you get pulled out of your county to play in a game against the best players in the country at the same time. It's just fantastic and, you know, it's a, a really good learning curve. You look back on those days when you did well, I think that was when I really made my mind up. I wanted to play professional cricket. It's the end of day one. We didn't get any get playing today, unfortunately. Uh, rain affected it quite a bit. I hope to do well. I hope, you know, the team does well. Yeah, I take wickets, score a few runs if I'm needed, and uh, win, the, win the tournament, and at the end of the week, hopefully, get selected for England. The class of 2016, hoping to follow in Reese's footsteps, gathered at the stately surroundings of Radley College for this year's festival. Hi, I'm Matt Brewer, I'm the Gloucestershire wicketkeeper and I'm here this week at Radley College representing the South West and the Bunbury Festival. We're staying in a B Social, let me show you around. This is my room, I'm right here. There we go. Yeah, nice and big. Uh, bigger than the one I've got at home. And I'm on my own, so I'm different to some of the other boys. Got uh, Bunbury stuff here, got a magazine, got our mug, and I got my playing kit for today. Ready to go and play cricket. Uh, just pop down and see some of the lads in the games room now. Sounds a bit lively in here. All right, lads, how's everyone? Who's playing? Will, Sam, George, Sam. Who's winning then, lads? It's a draw. All right, right. Well, we got table tennis table here, pool table. Got the piano for the musicians amongst us. Don't know about you lot, but I'm going to go get some breakfast. So here we are on the main pitch at Radley, with the old pavilion to my right. We've then got another pitch behind with another nice pavilion. Uh, we've got our outdoor net facilities and even a golf course behind. With the weather like this, we're set for a top week at the Bunbury Festival. With nervous excitement in the air, the week began with the presentation of regional caps. 2005 Bunbury James Taylor was on hand to do the honours. This is the first kind of stepping stone and first big achievement almost in their young careers. Um, so it's a good honour and then the next step is, is trying to represent your country. I said to the boys that you play better with a smile on your face. Whatever sport, whatever um, challenges you're doing, you're always performing better any walks of life. Whether you're in an office, you always do it better if you're enjoying it and you play with a smile on your face. Hopefully that message got across to them. Across the week, four regions compete in both 50 and 20 over competitions. The North, Midlands, South and West and London and the East. 
70 players have gone on to represent England, making the festival a huge success, despite some difficulties early on. When Esker sadly uh, didn't have enough resources to, uh, to run it, um, David English came in and started up the Bunbury Festival, supported it. 1986, I was uh, doing a TV programme called You and Me, and I had a colleague of mine called Jan Brichter, and as I spoke about these characters, Jan was sketching, and I said, look, we could, um, how about some cricketers? We could have the rabbits, Ian Buntham, Viv Radish, little Raj Bun from Bungalore. Then we go to Australia, we could have Dennis Lettis and Rodney Munch, and they could play uh, on Hare's Rock. And so we created these books called Bunbury Tales. And then I got a call from Cyril Cooper from the English Schools Cricket Association. He said, look, Dave, will you help us? Our under-15 national festival will go under unless we can find the finance. We've run out of dosh. And I thought, this is fantastic. Well, what an honour. I said, on one condition, we call it the Bunbury English Schools Cricket Festival after my books. This is the first time we've been asked to bring together what is, in essence, the best 56 players at under 15 and actually some under 14. We're trying to see them as people as well, get to know them as people, find out what makes them tick, um, how they respond to pressure, how they respond when, when they're playing well, how they go when they're playing badly. The best 24 lads from here will go to uh, Loughborough for a three-day game and then the, the incentive now, even more, is that with its 30th year anniversary that uh, there will be a tour come March to Sri Lanka where we will play the, the similar age groups in Sri Lanka, so that's a massive thing for them. Under-15s cricket in this country is so healthy. Any of these guys could, could go on to represent England in the future. After a competitive week of cricket, attention turned to the awards night, with a former Radley pupil returning to lend a hand. It's incredible to be back at my old uh, hunting ground and, uh, and great to see you know, the schools in fine fettle and, and fantastic to see all these young kids out there having an incredible experience, like a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience to, to be alongside other top-quality cricketers of their age and eat, drink, eat, drink and, and live cricket for a, for a week or so. On the night, South and West were crowned winners of the 50-over competition, with the Midlands taking 20-over glory. South and West Sam Young was named best batsman, Dominic Leach of the North took the bowling award, and Sean Sullivan of London and East won the all-rounder honours. So, 30 years after his first involvement, how does David English reflect on the journey? I'm very proud. It's something I enjoy doing so much, I never really analyse it too much. Occasionally in the middle of winter when it's snowing or whatever, I think back to myself, I said, that was a bit special. Radley College, good heavens, marvellous. Having already helped to develop some of England's greatest ever players, the work of people like David English and the Bunbury Festival looks certain to create many more future England stars.